Well, it was once upon a time, it was once upon a time, it was once a long time ago. It was once such a long time ago. That time as we know it now. Well, that time didn't behave in the same way. It didn't move in a straight line. It wasn't domesticated. No. That time was alive. That time danced. That time sang. That time moved through all things. A little bit crooked way or maybe in a circle or a spiral, undulating. It was like a heartbeat, like a great rhythm, and all things moved to that rhythm. In a time like that, there was a village where there was a great gathering that was happening. It was a great happening. One that happened each year. Where all the villages would come together for a day of sports and dancing, but most importantly, of song. For in this part of the world, everybody had a song. And they loved to show off. They would go to the center and they would sing their song and then the next one would come and they would say, oh, that was a good song. But check this song out. And that one would belt out a song and that would go on and on and on for hours and hours and hours. Everybody had a song. When you came of age, you received a song. That's how it was in this part of the world. Well, almost everyone had a song. You know, there was that one, right? That one in the gathering who was sitting alone off at the edge by himself. The one who some of the uh, older women would walk by and they would just go, can you believe it? A man with no song. Can you believe it? He had no song. And because of that, they called him No Song. And No Song went about his days often alone. But what he loved to do, what he was great at, was hunting and tracking and being in the woods and amongst the living world. They say he was such a master that he could go into the woods and know exactly what was going on miles and miles and miles away just by listening to the wind, talking to the birds, putting his ear down to the ground. Animals would come to him and he would say a prayer. He would honor all the beings, all the creatures. And he understood the life cycle. And he knew what plants were good to eat. He knew what mushrooms were good to eat. He knew what were poison, what were medicine. And he lived his days in this way. One day, No Song was walking through the woods. Just got done having a great conversation with a bluebird. When all of a sudden, an idea came to his mind. It was an outrageous idea. It was a crazy idea. It was a utterly pointless idea. And because of this, he loved it. And the idea was this. He was going to make a giant stew for no one in particular and for absolutely no reason. Just a giant stew for the heck of it. And he thought this was brilliant. It made him laugh when he got this idea. He's like, oh! 
I've got to do this. So he went into a clearing in the woods, built a fire, put a great big kettle over that fire, put water in there, and started to throw all kinds of delicious things into the stew. He threw all kinds of vegetables, all kinds of plants, some medicinal herbs that would make it healthy and good, different kinds of animals, different mushrooms, this and that and other things, a couple of stones just to make it a stone soup. Hell, why not? He was having such a good time. He just made this stew and after a while the stew started to bubble and bubble and cook and cook and hours and hours and hours were going by and that smell, oh imagine the smell of this stew, started going off and covering the whole forest like a blanket. It was a delicious thing. Can you smell that stew right now? Oh, makes the belly grumble. Makes the ears ring. It's so delicious. It's so delicious. So, well, it just so happened, it just so happened that in that part of the world, at that very time, you know who was wandering through the forest? Lord Coyote! Lord Coyote just happened to be wandering through the forest at that very time. And he sniffed the air. And he said, oh, something smells good. And you know how Coyote is with his appetite. When he has an appetite for something, he will stop at nothing to get it. And so he started following his nose and following that smell all the way through the woods, up this hill, across this creek, under this bush. And he followed and he followed and he followed until, and it was night at this point, he saw the fire and he saw the stew in the clearing. And he stayed just outside the firelight for a little while, just to make sure it was safe. And when he was sure, when he was sure that it was safe, he stepped into the light and looked at no song. And he said, what do you take for that stew? And no song looked at Coyote. And he said, Coyote, you're the Lord Coyote. You're the Lord of song. I know exactly what I want, what I want is a song, and not just any song, uh-uh. No, I want a song that will make people weep when they hear it. I want a song that will heal people's hearts. I want a song that when people hear it, years and ancestors and, and ages of forgiveness will happen in a moment. I want a song that will make lovers want to love more. I want a song that'll heal the sick. I want a song like that. The coyote said, that is a mighty powerful song you are asking for. A song like that has certain conditions. What are those conditions, asked no song. Well, first, that song can never be sung at the wrong places. Sung at the wrong places. Oh, you, you think that I would sing a song like that in the wrong place? I would never sing a song like that in the wrong places. Okay then. Well, the second condition is a song like that can never be sung at the wrong times. Sung at the wrong times. I know the sacred. I know that this would be such a sacred song. It could only be sung at certain times, the right times. I would never, ever sing it in the wrong times. Well, if that's the case, then you got yourself a deal. So some time passed, some time passed, some time passed. And it was time for the annual gathering. 
Well, you know the one where all the villagers came together from all the villages around to engage in sport and dance and most importantly, in song. And for hours and hours and hours, the people would share songs with each other, much to all their delight. Well, you can imagine their surprise when no song himself steps into the center of the circle. Everyone started whispering, what's no song? I don't know. What do you think he's doing? I have no idea. And everyone got quiet. And no song tilted his head back. And he began to sing his song. And he sang and he sang and he sang and he sang his song and as the people listen to the song, their hearts began to open. As the people heard this song, tears started to pour down their eyes as the people heard this song. Old grudges began to be forgiven. And as the people heard this song, they heard the most beautiful song that they had ever heard in their life. And when he finished singing, it was so quiet you could hear a pin drop. And then all in one voice, all together, the people said, sing it again, sing it again, sing it again. In no song, he tilted his head back and he sang that song again. And the people were weeping even more and they got up and they were dancing and they got up and they were ecstatic. And when he was done, they said, sing it again. And again, he sang and again, he said, all night long, he sang his song. And when the evening was over, they said to him, we have a new name for you. Your new name for now on shall be singing wonderfully. Oh, and he liked that very much. He liked that name a lot, singing wonderfully. He put it on like a new coat and it felt good. Well, people started coming up to him and they said, well, that is such a beautiful song. You must, you must come to our village in a few weeks' time. It is the chief's birthday, the chief of our village. It is his birthday, and nothing but this song would do justice to honor him. You must come. And he said, okay, and someone else came up to him and said, oh, you must come and sing at my son's wedding. Please, please, you must, anything, anything you want, you just, you must. That is the best way to bless him and his new bride. And he said, okay, and others started coming up. And as the days went on, and as the weeks went on, and as the months went on, he would go from village to village, to one occasion, to another, singing his song. And every time, people would come up to him and they would say, oh, you must come to this event. Oh, you must come to this happening. This is the most important thing I wouldn't ask you, but really, the bakery is opening. Really, it's my daughter's bat mitzvah. Really, it's this event. Really, it's that event. And, and his whole schedule was full, like a year and a half out. And he would go, and he would go, and he would perform his song. And everywhere he went, people would heal. Everywhere he went, tears would fall down. Everywhere he went, people would be so ecstatic and happy and full of gratitude. And over time, he was spending more time in this village or that village. 
And he was spending less and less time in the woods, communing with the living world. One day, one day, he was at some village. He didn't even know which one he was in anymore. And it was nighttime, and he was sleeping in his tent. And as he was sleeping, he didn't notice a sound of something or someone approaching that tent. And as he was sleeping, he didn't notice the flap of the tent lift up and a hand reach under, maybe it was a paw, and reach into his heart and take back that song. time of year again. It was that time of year again, the time for the annual gathering, where all the villagers of all the villages came together for an afternoon, an evening full of sport and song, where everyone shared their song with each other, for everyone had a song. Almost everyone, except for that one sitting off to the side by himself. Can you believe it? A man with no song? Can you believe it? That is all I know of this story. Thank you so much. Woo!